Oh yeah, I'm excited today because we're talking about spreadsheets. I love making spreadsheets. If you haven't seen my spreadsheets, they're over at drawbridgefinance.ca. I have all sorts of mortgage calculators and tools for traders, which is awesome. But today I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes workings of a little formula that recently changed in Google Sheets. And we used to use a formula called Sheet Names. Now it's called Sheet Name Array. And one of my workbooks is a little bit broken because of it. So I'm gonna show you the programming behind how it works. And it's amazing because it, it generates in a single cell of data, it generates a list of all of the open tab names in a Google Sheet workbook. Pretty awesome. Let's get into it. Everybody, welcome back. My name is Levi Woods. This is Drawbridge Finance. This is an opinion channel only about money. I do have some trades in this little uh, video demo, and this should not be misconstrued as financial advice in any way, shape, or form because I don't do that kind of thing here on this channel. If you like my comment, remember to give me a big thumbs up, comment down below, and share it with your friends. Let's get into today's lesson. Now, I've been known to make some pretty fancy spreadsheets, and this one is no exception. You can see in here, what I've got is I've got cells that actually link over. They're pulling information from another cell and from another spreadsheet. So if we look at this AAL, December 14th, it's actually pulling the information from cell B13 on the spreadsheet AAL, December 14th, which you can see is down here. And what I've done is I've actually made this list so that it appears as if I've entered the data. If you click on it, it looks like I've typed it in, Autodesk December 2nd, but in fact I haven't. It's actually just a single formula in one cell. If I delete that formula, the entire thing just goes blank. And I'll show you how to do this because all I have to do is put that formula in and it just loads everything up and automatically populates all the information real time. Pretty slick. I'm gonna go up here to file and insert a sheet. I'm gonna just start with a brand new one so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, the formula itself is really simple. In this case, it is sheet name array. And then I'm in brackets, I'm giving it some sort of cell reference. So in this case, I'm gonna give it cell reference B2. It automatically populates that data out. It just pulls all of the information. I'm gonna go up here. So I'm gonna to go to insert and I can insert a checkbox. And what that's going to do is basically allow this page to refresh. Every time I change this, I click it on or off, it is going to automatically refresh this data and give me up-to-date data. That's why I've done this. And it's the easiest way I've found to make this kind of formula function. And you'll notice that the very first one in this listing is zero trade rolling blank, which is actually this sheet here, which means that it's skipping the first one, two, three, four, five sheets. In actual fact, there's another hidden sheet in here as well, so it's actually skipping six. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. But the first thing we're gonna do is what is this sheet name array? So we go up here to the extensions, we're gonna to go to the apps script. It, when you open this up, you can create your own function. And this is the function down here that I'm using. So this is sheet name array. You can see that that's what I typed in. And then it just has this open and closed bracket. And it has a curly bracket and it says variable out equals new. The, the tag is array, open, close brackets, variable sheets. And then this is the coding spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet, open, close dot get sheets, open, close, semicolon. You can just copy and paste this. I'll post this down in the description. You can copy and paste it. It's, it's all the same. There's really only one thing that's happening in here. There's only one variable and that's this variable six. So if I change this to a different number, it will skip more sheets. So if I click on eight and then I hit save project up here and I go back to my, uh, my new sheet that I've just created and I click on this checkbox or if not, it just even updated itself. So now you can see it is skipping two more sheets sheet number seven and sheet number eight. And again, I, I do have a hidden sheet in here, so that's why that's working like that. Now, the, the second set of coding is to pull information from this other sheet. So I'm looking at AAL December 22nd. And what I'd like to do is I would want, I would like to pull the information in cell E13. It doesn't matter what cell I'm referencing, but that's the one I wanna do, E13. So let's just take a look at how we can do that. Now I can use the indirect function. It's pretty simple. So we're just typing indirect. And you see it pops up here. I'm just gonna hit enter. And now it's asking for this cell reference. So if I go over to this, the worksheet that I'm trying to grab the cell from, and I'm gonna select the cell, it automatically fills in the information. I'm just gonna close the bracket, and then I'm gonna hit enter. 
Now it gives me this reference error and it's actually pretty easy to fix. What it's looking for is it actually needs these to be in a double quote. So I'm going to put a double quote at the beginning and a double quote at the end. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now it, it fills out that information. You can see it's referencing over and it's just pulling the information from sheet AAL December 22nd and then cell E13. Now that is not helpful because what I want to do is I actually want to reference over to this cell. So I'm going to double click on this formula and I'm going to redirect it here. So I'm going to delete this. I'm just going to hit delete. So I'm going to type in the reference B4. It requires a little bit more work. So I'm going to put a, a second quote and then I'm going to put a quote in behind the B4. So now to reference that. And then I'm just going to put an ampersand in here on either side. And what that's going to do is it's going to say start quote um, and B4 end quote exclamation mark. And the only other thing I'm going to add in here is I'm going to add a dollar sign so that it can't change the cell reference. It's always going to look for cell E and always look for cell E13, but it's going to be pulling this middle information from cell B4. So now if I hit enter, it is now pulling the information from cell E13 from this sheet that's listed here in B4. All I have to do now is just pull down and now it'll show me all of the cell information that is in each of these sheets. So if I look at AAL February 28th, it looks like cell E13 is blank. Let's go take a look at that. Look over here and it is. Cell E13 is blank. If I wanted to change this to something else, I could. I could just change this to column D, which did have information, and it will pull column D. And now I can just pull that down and it would show me column D13 or cell D13 from all of these sheets. So it's a quick and easy way to add a reference to a series of spreadsheets that are all the same using this sheet name array and uh, refreshing it using a checkbox. And that's as easy as building a little spreadsheet is. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to give me a like, comment down below, share it with your friends, and let's get rich together. Thanks so much for watching. See you very soon.